HDMI 2.1, G-Sync, Free Sync, in sync 4K, 2K, 8K, Special K, mm, healthy, 60 hertz, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 240 hertz, I'm hurt, TN display, IPS display, VA display, curved display. Needless to say, there's a lot at play when we're talking about gaming monitors. Let's go. What's going on YouTube? It's Sunday, so that means another tech video from DubCP. Today we're discussing the best gaming monitors for the PS5, Xbox, and PC. Smash that like button, comment down below, let me know if you're a team TV or your team gaming monitor. And subscribe if you're brand new. I'm posting a video every single day this year from tech news to video game tutorials. So hit that subscribe button with the post notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Let's jump into it. There are timestamps down in the description if you want to skip along. We're going to break this video down in four different parts. Resolution, panels, refresh rate. And after all of that, we're going to discuss the best gaming monitors coming to the market 2021. When you think about gaming monitors, you probably think resolution is the number one thing to consider. Well, that's not entirely true. And it's about personal preference. But if we're talking about consoles, the PS5 and Xbox Series X or S, then it really is important which resolution you decide upon when you're talking about gaming monitors. Because natively, Xbox Series X and S and the PS5 all have different resolutions that they can perform at. With the HDMI 2.1 cable, which allows for higher refresh rates, more information to be sent through the monitor from your Xbox or PS5, the resolutions that they can hit all differ. For example, the Xbox Series X will hit resolutions of 4K, 2K, 1080p, and go as low as 720p whereas the ps5 will only give you 4k skip over 2k 1080p and 720p and the xbox series s will natively give you 1440p which is 2k 1080p and 720p if you were to purchase a 1440p gaming monitor your ps5 wouldn't even hit that resolution. So you have to be mindful of these resolutions when it comes to buying a gaming monitor. And if we're discussing the PC, then there's a lot more options available to you because most PCs have what is called a display port to send the information to the monitor. So you could hit higher resolutions or lower resolutions, but you will have the option to choose depending depending on your graphics card that's in your PC. And it basically boils down to your personal preference of 4K, 2K, UHD, 1080p, 720p. You can get into all kinds of different ranges when it comes to PC. Now that you know what type of resolution that your console or PC could hit, the basic definition of resolution is how many pixels can fit in the screen. I don't see any gaming monitors hitting 8K, but they range from 720p all the way up to 4K natively. And when I say natively, that means when you turn on the screen, it natively hits that range of pixels. But with gaming monitors, it also depends on what type of panel those pixels are going to emanate from. TN, IPS, VA, what does it all mean when it comes to gaming monitors? There are three types of panels that gaming monitors have. 
we have what is called a TN panel, an IPS panel, and a VA panel. TN, which stands for twisted pneumatic, in-plane switching is IPS, and vertical alignment, which is VA. They all have their pros and cons. TN panels are usually used for competitive gaming just because of the higher refresh rates. We're talking 240 hertz. For first person shooter games, Call of Duties or the Battlefields, TN panels are usually the first off the line for those types of games. Con to, if I look from the left or if I look from the right or if I'm up above it or if I'm down below it, the colors aren't going to be consistent. You'll get a washed out effect when you're looking at it from different angles. Next, we got the IPS in-plane switching panels. Think of the TN panel, but better. The viewing angles hurts the TN panel. Well, the IPS panel accounts for that, and it tries to bring in the vibrant colors when you look from different angles because the technology is so new they're actually incorporating higher refresh rates with this ips panel biggest con to the ips panel is the price and we'll talk more about the price ranges when we discuss the best gaming monitors of 2021 and the final panel we're going to talk about is the va panels biggest pro to the va is the color the color that you get on a VA panel is so much better than the TN and the IPS because that's what it was made for. The collective sweet spot of color and viewing angles. And the biggest con to the VA is the price range and the response time is a little bit slower than the IPS and TN models, where the IPS and TN models can hit response times of 0.5 milliseconds. Usually you won't see that in a VA model. You're talking four to five to six millisecond on response time. So it is a little bit slower, but the picture you're getting is much more vibrant than the IPS or the TN model. Overall, with the three types of panel, it comes down to personal preference. What type of games you play? What is your mobility like in your workspace? And how much money do you have to spend on these panels? That's what it always boils down to. The bread, baby. Enough talking about panels though. Let's get into the coup de gras. Let's talk about refresh rate for these gaming monitors. Using a clip from WASD.RO, I wanna talk about one of the most important aspects of your gaming monitor, and that is the refresh rate. We're talking 240, 144, 120, and 60 hertz. Live view of the racing game that's on the monitor, you can see what happens between 60, 120, 144, and 240 hertz. The biggest thing that you need to pay attention to is 60 hertz to 120 hertz. There have been tests conducted that says when you go from 120 hertz to 240 hertz on your gaming monitors, you can't even notice the difference unless it's super slowed down like you see right here. And what you need to pay attention to is the 60 hertz to 240 hertz, which shows the difference in smoothness in the picture. 60 hertz is jumping along the screen versus the 240 hertz that is moving much smoother. Another thing that you need to think about is that most games that you're playing on console right now, outside of the Fortnites, the Call of Duties, the Dirt, the Willow Wisp, they're all in 60 hertz. If you want to have 120 hertz at 4K, you have to have HDMI 2.1. And right now, there are no gaming monitors that have HDMI 2.1 capabilities. They will come later in 2021. That's the point of this video. I want to make sure you understand the difference in frame rates and the max capabilities that your consoles have right now. PC has the display port, which will allow for different resolutions and different frame rates. You could potentially get a 4K 240 Hertz panel that will allow for the maximum resolution and the maximum Hertz. Now that you know the refresh rate, the panel type, and the resolution to look for in gaming monitors, let's talk about the five 
best gaming monitors that is going to hit the market late March, early April. Remember, no gaming monitor has 2.1 support right now, but we are getting very close to the moment that it does. All these monitors links are in the description. So let's get into talking about what we have to look forward to and what I'm gonna do for my monitor needs. Let's begin with the ViewSonic Elite 32 inch 4K 144 Hertz gaming monitor. 32 inches of a monitor with native UHD. Xbox and PS5 can be ran at 4K 120 frames per second. Free sync or G sync, or in Layton's terms, adaptive sync, just means how well your refresh rate and your hertz mesh together. And what you would love to see on all monitors that you're looking at is either free sync or G sync. One millisecond technology to reduce motion blur. It doesn't list the price, but you can expect anywhere between $900 and $1,200. Next, we have the Philips Momentum 328 M1R for console gaming that now HDMI 2.1 is included. Actually, they had a release date on this monitor of May 2020, and because they wanted to include the HDMI 2.1 for consoles, they bumped it back to this quarter of 2021. We'll definitely support 4K resolution. We'll have at least 120 Hertz and it will support console gaming with the HDMI 2.1. Also, it's going to be a VA screen. So you're gonna get the best of playing angles and vibrant colors. The price is going to be around 599 pounds which is roughly $900. And we can expect this Philips Momentum early May, 2021. And then we have the LG 27GN950 gaming monitor that will support HDMI 2.1. The monitor will come at us with 4K resolution at 144 Hertz and HDMI 2.1 bandwidth support that will unlock a 160 Hertz refresh rate. It will support AMD FreeSync and be compatible with the basic NVIDIA G-Sync as well. And we can look for this LG Ultra Gear 27 GP950 sometime in April. We don't know the price range, but we can expect it to be within that same realm of 900 to 12 or even 1300 because it is LG. Next up, we have the Acer Nitro XV282K KV monitor that's a 4K UHD IPS panel that touts a one millisecond response time that is compatible with FreeSync and G-Sync, and it goes up as high as 120 Hertz. It doesn't tell us the size of this monitor, but I'm guessing because of the 4K and the 120 Hertz that is gonna be somewhere around 32 inches. And it is IPS, so the technology is going to deliver the clear images and the wide viewing angles. And according to this website, the price point is going to be around $900. And the final HDMI 2.1 gaming monitor to look ahead for is the Asus ROG Swift PG32UQ display. It's a 32 inch 4K canvas that will support console gaming. And it's going to be 144 Hertz. So you can expect that this is gonna be the top of the line monitors when it comes to 4K gaming. And to hit the console peaks of 4K 120 frames. It supports the G-Sync and FreeSync technology of AMD and Nvidia. The ROG Swift PG32UQ is the one monitor that I am paying close attention to as we get closer to the end of Q1. This gorgeous IPS model might just be the one for me as I look for the perfect gaming monitor for all my gaming needs. And after all of that, 
research for what the best gaming monitor is and what's upcoming, I've decided to wait either on the Asus ROG or something better than that because I need to have a gaming monitor that will encompass everything that I'm playing right now. The Xbox, the PS5, and my brand new PC when it comes here that has a 3080 graphics card in it with a 5900 Ryzen 9 processor. I want a gaming monitor that can hit the high resolution of 4K as well as the frames per second in 120 or even 144. May even go to something like 165 hertz in a 4K monitor. Right now for PC, the sweet spot is a 1440, 240 hertz monitor. And you probably don't even need a 240 hertz monitor if you don't have a high-end graphics card in your PC. But as far as Xbox and PlayStation 5 is concerned, you want to have a 4K monitor if you have a Series X or a PS5 that will hit at least 120 hertz. And remember, PS5 will not run 1440p. Those monitors will be here by the end of March, early April. So get your eyes peeled and ready to go to have the best experience. I'm still gonna hold out for that 4K 144 hertz monitor that supports HDMI 2.1 that my PC's 3080 can run to the max. And right now it's looking like that Asus ROG. Everything is down in the description. I hope this video has helped you. Please drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're brand new. I would really appreciate it. I love doing videos like this, but it takes a lot of effort and time. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all already know what it was. It's your boy, Doug CP. Here to do one thing and one thing only, and that's... Deuces.